one thing I've noticed is in my family and in um, a lot of families that I've spoken with, talking about family history doesn't seem to be very popular. <laughs> it seems to be something that scares the living daylights out of people. But how can we do a program like this without giving people a tip on how to prepare their family members to know about their family history? Well, I have my own answers for these, but I'd love to hear from some people who deal with this. No, go ahead, Elizabeth. Come on, come on, Elizabeth. Go for it. Give, give us your answers. And Kim, too, obviously. <laughs> Well, I have to admit, Jay, I'm a pretty direct person, but one of the things I talk about is that there are certain times of years when families get together. In the Jewish community, Passover is a really common time when we all sit down to table together. And although it may not seem like the most cheerful topic, <laughs> I think really asking the question and saying, you know, we care a lot about family in our community, and one of the things we also care a lot about is our health. And it would be really helpful for all of us to know these kinds of things, and I wonder if people would be willing to share anything specific. In, in families that don't have that kind of particular religious tradition, Thanksgiving's another good time to yeah. do it. And yeah. if people don't want to talk about it out loud, I encourage people to just have stuff, people write stuff down on a piece of paper, and then somebody can be the family historian who can pull it all together. Uh, super. Kim, what do you think? <laughs> That's Thanksgiving is a huge one as well in terms of people giving thanks for their health and wanting to kind of ask about family history. The other things that I sometimes tell my patients, especially when we're scheduling them over the phone, is I say you can blame it on the white coat. This person in a white coat told me that I need to learn this. And sometimes if you just add a little humor or sometimes a little wine, it, uh, it helps to get the <laughs> conversations going. Uh, there's also a lot of people who are really into things like Ancestry.com where that can also be a segue in terms of wanting to capture the family history, the ancestry, but also the health. So okay. what you're saying, if I understand this right, you're saying use a tool like Ancestry.com to open up a bigger discussion to be talking about where grandma lived and all her medical records that might be public or her, her um, certificate of death and her certificate of birth as an open the door opportunity to talk about family history in general. Is that right? That's one also, place to start. <laughs> I also think that it's important, you know, as Kim said, use us white coat people as the bad uh, guys. We're happy to do that. Uh, hey. But I think when you acknowledge, <laughs> yeah, I know, um, when, it, when you acknowledge that it's awkward up front, that's okay. If you say, you know, I know this is a really awkward topic for all of us, yeah. but it's so important because we do care deeply about each other and that's why we have to have this conversation then people are more willing to go along with it, I think. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.